We're now in the June 09 exam. We're on page 7, starting with question 43, which is an SI unit for work done. Let's see, the formula for work is uh, force times distance. So we want force times distance. And the, un the uh, formula for force, well, there's a couple of them, but uh, force, uh, acceleration is net force over mass, so force equals mass times acceleration. So I'm going to write that. Work equals mass times acceleration times distance. I remember that because whenever I have to do work, I get mad. Get it? Never mind. All right, so um, mass is kilograms. Acceleration is meters per second squared. And distance is meters. So I'm looking for kilogram meters squared per second squared. And that's the first one I got. That's not it. That's not it. Well, that's not it. Okay. Question 44. The momentum of a photon P is given by the equation P equals uh, H over lambda, where H is Planck's constant and lambda is the photon's wavelength. Which equation correctly represents the energy of a photon in terms of its momentum? Well, this is kind of a, a puzzle type of question where you have to figure out what the different units are. So let's take it apart. Well, I can find the energy for a photon equation in the modern physics section, and it's uh, h times frequency, or hc over lambda, because if you remember, uh, frequency times wavelength is the speed of light, so uh, you can uh, figure out frequency and the inverse of, of wavelength uh, when you incorporate the speed of light. So let's try that one, see what that does for us. Energy is equal to hc over lambda. Now, Momentum is h over lambda, which means lambda would equal uh, h divided by momentum. So we could substitute the uh, Planck's constant divided by momentum for lambda. So we could say energy is equal to h c divided by lambda, which is going to be h momentum. So I wonder if they got energy is equal to CP. Energy equals PC. I really think this is going to be the right answer. If I did my substitution right. I hope so. I hate to make a mistake on one of these. Question 45. A constant potential difference. Voltage is the same. It's applied across a variable resistor at a constant temperature. Which graph represents relationship between resistance and current? So I need some kind of relationship between resistance and current. And I like to do my formula first. And I have in my electricity equation, resistance equals V over I. So if R equals V over I, then as I increases, resistance is going to be the same. Uh, resistance will go down, but they want to see what happens uh, as resistance increases. So as resistance increases, what happens to current? So as resistance goes up, well, let's see, let's write this. Current is equal to voltage divided by resistance. So as my resistance increases, my current decreases. So uh, I like this equation. This shows my current going up with more resistance. This shows my current going up with more resistance. And this shows my current going up with more resistance. So I think that's the one I like. Question 46. A 3 ohm resistor and a 6 ohm resistor are connected in series to an operating electric circuit. The current is 3 ohm through the 3 ohm resistors is 4 amps. What's the potential difference across this 6 ohm resistor? Now there's a lot of ways to do this, but I like a little sketch. 3 ohms, 6 ohms, and maybe a little data grid. This really isn't necessary for a lot of things, but I like it. Voltage, current, resistance. 
and let's see I've got a 3 ohm resistor and a 6 ohm resistor and I've got 4 amps through the 3 ohms so I've got 4 amps and now in a series circuit I know uh, that my current is the same everywhere in that circuit so if I know that I've got 4 amps through this resistor I'm going to have 4 amps through that as well and uh, voltage equals current times resistance so let's say 6 times 4 that's what about 24 volts and uh, there's 24 volts there we go question 47 which combination of resistors has the smallest equivalent resistance well I always like to throw this formula in there resistance is a function of the material it's proportional to its length. The longer it is, the more resistance. And it's inversely proportional to its cross-sectional area. The fatter it is, the less resistance. So if I write that down here, resistance is length over area. And we'll assume they're all the same material so we can eliminate that function. So I got a 2 and a 2 in series. That gives it 4 because we've doubled the length. Essentially, we've taken a 2 ohm resistor and now we've added the same thing again. So we've doubled the length we've doubled the resistance. We've got a 2 and a 2 in parallel. So now we've doubled the area. Now it's it's basically a fatter conductor. And so we've cut the resistance in half. So that makes this 1 ohms. I've got a 1 and a 1 in uh, parallel. So resistance is uh, length over cross. Now it's 2 times that so I'm going to say my resistance for this is 0.5 ohms and I've got a 1 and a 1 a series so that makes this about a 2 ohm resistor and they're looking for the smallest equivalent resistance and that makes that the smallest equivalent resistance